Neuroendocrine neoplasms, uh, more commonly called uh, neuroendocrine tumors or uh, NAIDS, uh, represent uh, an heterogeneous and rare group of uh, malignancies. Uh, they can develop uh, uh, all over our body, but the largest uh, group is represented uh, uh, from those uh, uh, developing in the gastroenteropancreatic uh, tract, followed by the uh, lung uh, NAIDS. NAIDS are usually classified on the basis of uh, their uh, histological characteristics, and currently we have uh, two main classifications. The WHO 2010 classification of the GAP gastroenteropancreatic NAINS and the 2015 WHO classification of the LANG NAINS. Specifically, the WHO 2010 GAP NAIN classification is based on the K67 and the mitotic index level, uh, the distinguishing two main groups. Less than 20% of K67 are usually called neuroendocrine tumors and they are the well differentiated or low intermediate grade. More than 20% of K67 represent the high grade of poorly differentiated carcinomas. The Lang 2015 WHO classification is based on the mitotic index and the necrosis. These two parameters permit to the pathologist to distinguish two main groups. One one is uh, the low intermediate grade or well differentiated, including uh, typical and atypical carcinoids, and the other one is uh, the poorly differentiated or high grade carcinomas, including large cell and small cell. Somatostatin receptors uh, represent one of the main targets in NETS and uh, the oldest one. Uh, they are represented by five subtypes uh, and the native uh, hormone somatostatin uh, binds specifically to all of them. But in clinical practice we just use the subtype 2 that is the most commonly represented and uh, it can be detected by means of two methods. Uh, one is the immune histochemical that um, gives us information about uh, its presence or not and the other one is the functional imaging that gives us information about the um, density of these receptors. We have two um, imaging, two types of imaging that can detect this uh, receptor and one is the somatostatin receptor scintigraphy, the so-called OctraScan or SRS, and the other one is the gallium-68 PET uh, CT DOTA peptide, the gallium PET. Both can detect the functional expression of these uh, receptors and uh, uh, this is uh, quite important in terms of clinical implications, the therapeutic implications, uh, because uh, it can give um, us uh, information uh, about the um, predictive value of the response to um, PRRT, uh, that is the peptide uh, receptor radiotherapy. It's important to detect the functional expression of the um, subtype 2 somatostatin receptors since uh, we have uh, um, the possibility to predict uh, the response to um, the peptide receptor radiotherapy that is one of the um, uh, therapeutic uh, options that we have uh, for uh, patients with neuroendocrine tumors. Over the last decades, eh, we observed uh, an increasing number of therapeutic uh, options for uh, net patients. Uh, particularly, over the last five years, we had uh, some uh, approvals of different therapies in several settings of uh, NETS. In particular, uh, Everolimus, uh, for example, that is an mTOR inhibitor, uh, has been approved uh, first for a uh, well-differentiated uh, pancreatic uh, NET uh, and then for uh, non-functional, uh, well-differentiated uh, gastrointestinal and lung NETS. Sunitinib, that is a multi-target inhibitor, uh, uh, has been approved for well-differentiated uh, advanced pancreatic NATE. 
The somatostatin analog octreotide and lariotide has been approved as an antiproliferative uh, as antiproliferative agents uh, in uh, uh, enteropancreatic nets. Although these advances uh, we don't have currently a validated sequencing of therapies in nets. Over the last years, uh, several factors um, uh, have been investigating uh, in uh, NET uh, to um, study their prognostic or predictive value. So far, for uh, some of them, the prognostic value has been uh, uh, observed. Uh, for example, uh, two genes, uh, the ATRX and the DAX combination, that are two genes uh, telomere related, demonstrated a, a, a good um, a correlation with a, a poor prognosis when uh, they are mutated. Unfortunately, uh, they don't represent a target for our therapies. Therefore, um, while we have uh, more and more uh, prognostic uh, um, uh, factors, uh, we don't have yet a clear predictive factor for response or uh, uh, efficacy of, of our therapies. Probably the only target that combines a prognostic and a predictive uh, value is the somatostatin receptor subtype 2. Netfield. There were uh, several advances uh, over the last uh, decades uh, in terms of uh, awareness uh, by the clinical community and also by the patients about uh, this type of malignancies, uh, but also in terms of uh, therapeutical options uh, and uh, research. Although that, uh, we don't have now a specific algorithm, uh, therapeutic algorithm to be applied to our patients with an advanced disease, although we have uh, many therapeutic options that can be discussed. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a predictive factor that is uh, one of the uh, most urgent uh, uh, medical need that uh, we have to uh, cover. But at this time, uh, until we don't have a specific predictive markers, uh, we should consider several points. First of all, the right diagnosis, then the right staging and the characterization of the disease, that means using both morphological and functional imaging, then the good characterization of the patient, and finally also discussing each case within a multidisciplinary team that should be composed by net dedicated specialists. Of course, we have to work uh, deeply uh, to find uh, uh, some predictive factor and validating uh, predictive factors coming from uh, retrospective analysis. Mm -hmm.